There's uh, tobacco and marijuana I, in there. That's all it is. Ick investing is a method for finding industries that elicit an ick reaction. This is probably the simplest investment strategy out there. How it works is if a company's name or industry causes people to become uncomfortable and wince when hearing it, well, then there's a higher chance the company's cash flows are undervalued. You don't see many wild stallions anymore. Now I must say, I'm not a fan of ick investing. Generally speaking, I'd rather buy and hold companies I like. However, this is one of my best performing stocks in the last year, and the reason I bought it is completely evil, but a little bit interesting. Now, when most people hear British American tobacco, they hear one thing. In this bottle, there's the lung of a man who was a moderate smoker till this great cancer grew in his lungs. Though smoking is not the only cause of lung cancer, it is the major one. We have known that smoking caused cancer since the 1940s, but did you know that almost a third of smokers now switch to a newer, cooler, more subtly evil tobacco product before the age of 39? I'm going to explain why British American tobacco has done so well in three stages. First, the movement towards vape. Second, the extraordinary regulation and advertising loopholes for vape products. And finally, the strange economics of the tobacco industry. Since the year I was born in 1995, taxes have increased and the number of smokers have reduced, and yet profits have gone up. How is this possible? And if this is true, then why does the new tobacco shop on my high street have the slogan, quit smoking, start vaping? Okay, let's get into it. Leading up and during the pandemic, vaping has taken the world by storm. Vaping is sold as an alternative to move people off smoking. However, people are accusing vaping manufacturers of targeting non-smoking children. Now, tobacco companies do deny this, but if you are at all familiar with the history behind tobacco companies, that's hardly surprising and it might be a little hard to trust them. Tobacco manufacturers are currently offering scholarships from £250 to £5,000 to students who write studies on whether vaping minimises smoking's negative effects. And while vaping is banned for children under 18, this scholarship is targeted at children of all ages. While cigarette manufacturers are saying they are selling a way to quit smoking, what they are actually doing is trying to move everyone to vaping. But how have they actually done this? Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose. Now, tobacco companies are no stranger to shifting their perceptions. Back in the 1950s, cigarettes were branded as a health product, and when advertising stopped them from doing this, they shifted from saying they were healthy to saying things like they're toasted. Everybody else's tobacco is poisonous. Lucky Strikes is toasted. Now, you may have been aware of vaping for a while, it's been around for over a decade. However, you might not be aware that in June 2021, Views, British American Tobacco's vape brand, was up 52% in revenue. This enormous spike was likely brought on by people working from home, feeling bored and using vape products as a way of passing the time, but it could also be because Vaping is very addictive. Tobacco on its own would not be one of the leading causes of cancer if it wasn't for one ingredient, nicotine. The buzz of which is why people go from having one a day to a pack a day. And although this is contested, it's widely considered that e-cigarettes actually have more nicotine than regular cigarettes. Despite being a nicotine tobacco product, perhaps the strangest thing is the loopholes brands like Views can exploit to advertise their products in music videos and in billboards, in a way that conventional tobacco products like cigarettes and rollies can't. Despite some pushback recently, vaping has appeared all over the internet on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, making tobacco trendy again. Not as a way to quit smoking, but as something to do instead of smoking. Now I don't vape and I've not done enough research into the medical implications of this product, so I'm not willing to put that into this video. However, if you've got thoughts on the medical implications of vape, your feelings on it, please put them in the comment section below. Now even without vape products and despite rising taxation and a decline in the number of people smoking, the tobacco industry has actually grown in revenue and profit over the last 20 years. I want you to get it out. I want to see it. 
I want to see how great it tastes. In the UK, a pack of cigarettes now sells for £14. That's up from £4.82 back in 2005. That's a 290% price increase. So why did I think British American Tobacco would do so well in 2021? Well, the evil discovery I made in that year was that tobacco or nicotine products are perhaps the most inflation resistant products in the world. The addictive nicotine factor, which gives tobacco its buzz and its ick means that pricing is not vulnerable to the typical supply and demand issues that other products face. And even worse, vaping is perhaps more addictive and was growing fast. Therefore, the tobacco industry probably has the highest pricing power in the market during the worst period of inflation in history. During inflation, you want a company with pricing power so when your company raises prices, consumers continue buying at the same quantity and people are literally addicted to this product. Now, if you're watching this and thinking I'm evil, well, you're right. This is the most outrightly evil trade in my portfolio. And if you'll never buy this stock for that reason I mentioned, well, that's kind of the point. That's why the price of this stock is so cheap. I would never ever suggest a non-smoker buying a British American tobacco product unless you are thinking about buying their shares. In which case I can tell you that their consumer will accept steep increases in price, they have a solid 8% annual dividend and a consistently growing free cash flow thanks to a new product release that is actively aimed at non-smokers. Now if you're watching this and you are a smoker or you're thinking about vaping, perhaps you should take the money that you were going to spend on vaping and instead put that into shares of British American tobacco. But hey, I'm not your mum. Daddy? Yeah, honey. It's up to you what you do with your own money and if you do decide to buy British American tobacco products, well, you'll be making me richer. Okay, with that guys, I have nothing left to say, but I will leave you with a message from Terry H, an ex-smoker. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Mary and I used to be a smoker. I want to give you some news about getting ready in the morning. Love you, man. Then when, then you're having me to fight. And now you're ready for the night.